Hey guys! So today we are going to talk about Go and C Sharp. Yes! Let's get into it. So Go, as you may know, is this amazing language provided to us by the good people at Google and it is it is absolutely amazing. It is I, abs I, I love it. I love that language. It's small, you get up and running really, really quickly. It can provide you with parallel processing, asynchronous programming, all of that awesome, awesome stuff. It is comp a compiled language with types, which is, is just beautiful in every single way. And it has the weirdest lo looking logo of any technology I've ever seen, which is great. Anywho, then you have C Sharp on the other hand, which is this titan in industry. It is, it is just hilarious how large that language is. I will tell you right now, if you're looking for a job, C Sharp and probably Java are the biggest bets out there. You, if, it's almost like if you can produce software that is decent in any of those two languages, you will have a job. It, just trust me, you will have a job. And maybe that's not the sexiest reason in the world, but apart from it being such a monstrous platform that's been around for so long, C Sharp has all kinds of other benefits to it. So let's talk about the things that I like about these two different languages. And when I think one makes a little bit more sense than the other. Now, if we take a look at the things that I like about C Sharp, so apart from it being a very good career choice, as a beginner, it's a very, very good first step for you. I would say that it's a better first step for you than Go, even though I actually absolutely love Go. And the reason is, as I said, the, the, the issue is that Go is, although it's very trendy and it's very hip and it's very amazing in many, many, many ways, it does not have the same sort of adoption that C Sharp has. And it doesn't have the same breadth or the width, uh, the diversity, if you will, that C Sharp has. And C Sharp has a better tool suite, a better working environment. In general, Visual Studio is absolutely amazing. And etc. 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 Now Go is getting there as well, but you have to just consider these things. Like the Go is still a little bit young in comparison. It's a little bit immature in comparison. I'm not saying that you can't use it because it's really damn powerful. But I'll talk to talk to you about why I think where I think Go makes the most amount of sense and where I personally would use Go over C sharp. But C Sharp, for a beginner, I would say, is a very good bet. It will help you if you want to do games programming or anything like that. If you want to do enterprise, you can do that. There's tons and tons of learning resources, tons of jobs. It has absolutely everything going for it. It's actually the biggest tip I can give to any junior developer today. Even those Java and C Sharp are not the sexiest languages out there. They're probably the, big, the, the best first stops for you. They will teach you everything you need to know and there's tons of resources and there's tons of jobs. And trust me, if you want to become a professional, these are very attractive things. If you are more of a one person type of deal, you just want to learn programming or you have a very specific reason why you want to learn programming, then maybe those are not the best choice for you. But for the industrious people out there who want to get hired, they're very good bets. So that's what I love about C Sharp. It is an absolutely amazing language where you can spend you, you can spend your entire career in C Sharp if you wanted to. That's a little bit boring for me. I, I like to diversify, but I really respect the people who make that choice because C Sharp gets stuff done. It is it, it's the sort of language where if you and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be that person in, at one point. I'm going to get there. I'm going to just get fed up with all of this diversity we have out there in the world and realize that shit, C Sharp and maybe Java, like they were doing it right for the, from the start. Why have I gone on this pilgrimage through a hundred languages to realize that shit, we had something that was already working. I'm pretty sure that a lot of developers get there sooner or later. Don't know if it's going to happen for me, but then when it happens and if it happens, I'm very happy to go back and just do C sharp. <laughs> Anywho, let's talk about Go. So Go is extremely powerful. It's extremely 
my favorite part about it is how easy it is to get started with it. it the syntax is small. You can learn almost all of the syntax in Go in just maybe a few hours or a few days, depending on you know how far in you want to go. You can get it's compiled with types, which is absolutely amazing. That's why I like it. It's when it comes to doing something like microservices. That's actually, or I'm giving away the point I was going to make, but hey. It's a spontaneous video, so here we go. When it comes to microservices and doing service-oriented architecture or distributed systems, that sort of thing, I think Go is probably my favorite language. It used to be Node. It really did. Like Node was the poster child for microservices and microservices and distributed systems or APIs or whatever you want to call it just a few years ago. But now you have Go and as someone who spends a lot of time in Node.js land and then switched over to, to start working in Go, I can tell you that I felt very productive very, very quickly in Go. I could the, like setting up an express server, I mean, unless, uh, just because I don't have the muscle memory, but I'm pretty sure that I could set up a Go server in roughly the same amount of time without even having remotely as much experience with Go as I have with, with Node. And the bigger benefit to it is that although Node has a very nice and diverse ecosystem and there's a lot of packages and I'm very exper fairly experienced with those things, Go is more performant. There is an absolutely ma amazing article where Uber, who was one of the biggest advocates of Docker containers, microservices, and Node.js development, they switched over their high, the, the, the services that they have, or they're doing that, f the services that require a lot of performance. They need to be blazingly fast, need to be able to cater to several thousands, thousands of requests every second. They moved that over to Go because Go has the potential to outperform Node.js. And if you think about that, that means you have a typed language, that comp a compiled type language, with multi th which has the same type of abilities, or rather the same size of syntax that JavaScript has. And that's just a, like a win-win in almost every single way. It's just amazing. I mean, honestly, if I went back in time today, I still would have... I'm not going to say that I wouldn't have gone with Node.js because the benefit of knowing, having Node and knowing JavaScript, because being really good at JavaScript these days is important. It is very, very important. And then having Node there makes things very easy for you. But if I were to do microservices or I was doing something like an API or something, even remotely more advanced than some nothing project that's just going to do some maybe database accesses or something like that, I would st go with Go. I wouldn't do C Sharp. I, I, would, I don't really like doing, uh, doing this sort of thing in C Sharp because C Sharp, in my opinion, although you can do it, it's more optimized for a different way of working. But Go has a small syntax, awesome typing system, it, there's an ID now coming out Go Goland, I think. Uh, that's the name. And up on top of that, it has blazingly fast performance. So to me, that's just a win-win. So when would I use one over the other? I would say this. I would say that if you want to be a little bit trendy and you want to work in a language that has a lot going for it right now. And probably the language that was, you know, if you didn't know that Go is the language that Kubernetes and Docker is running, is running through. So uh, that's, that's, that, those are pretty important projects. I just want you to know. So I see a very bright future for Go. I even argue that it might face off against Node in terms of the most popular solution for companies who have a little bit like so have matured a little bit I don't know if that's gonna happen but I would choose go if you're doing microservices a distributed system something like that or maybe you're making an API of some sort something like that that's when I would do use go you can do that websites as well but I would argue that C sharp 
would be my go-to if I'm doing traditional enterprise applications. That you're doing a web page, like a web a web page type of thing, or you're doing a really, really large corporate system where you have to be a little bit more conservative because Go is, even though it's very trendy, it's very popular, it is not in anywhere, it's not even close to as, as established as C Sharp. It's getting there, but it's not there just yet. Because let's not forget that there is a benefit to choosing tools that are well established in, in certain circles. Because not everybody wants to be super trendy. Some people want to be secure and so sure that there's good support and things are going to work. And that's where I say that C Sharp dominates. If I were to pick a stack to build my company on, I would start, I, I, unless, as I said, unless I'm making a distributed system, I would do C-sharp every single day of the week. If I am doing a service or I'm adding something to my stack or to my project, let's say that you could have started out building your entire company in C-sharp and then you realize that shit, we need a few services that need to be really high performance. That's where I would reach for Go. That's at least how I feel about it. And honestly, picking between the two really comes down to that. What type of project are you working in? If I'm building something for myself or I'm building something that I just want to use Go for, just go for it. That's, that's what I do anyway. If I'm building something for an enterprise, really big, large scale type of project, I would start out using C Sharp. That's how I feel about it.